Hi friends, welcome to Kids Worship. I'm glad you're joining me today to hear more of God's story. Before we open our Bibles and see what's in my basket, let's sing Jesus Loves Me together. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Thanks for singing with me. So let's get our bodies ready to hear God's word and our hearts ready to hear God's word and our minds ready to hear God's word by singing our, our Bible words from the book of Psalms. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Let's hear the word of the Lord together. So I've got in my basket my Bible, and my Bible is God's word, and it's full of stories about who he is and who Jesus is and how we can love and serve him. We are continuing our story in the book of Genesis today. And Genesis is the first book of the Bible, and it's the first book in the Old Testament. And we are going to look at these yellow words down here. Last week we talked about all of these. We're starting down here in chapter 28. We have these yellow words and all of these. So before we pull out more pieces from my basket, let's get our desert ready for our story. We've had the desert with us the last few weeks to help us remember that important things happen to God's people in the desert. And we know that the desert can be a hard place to live. It can be hot. It can be cold. There's not a lot of water and plants and things to eat. But it's important that we remember that God does things in the desert. So we have been talking the last few weeks about a man named Jacob. So there's his home with his family. Let me find Jacob in our basket. There's Jacob. So Jacob has been, has been the main character of our story. And last week we talked about his brother Esau and that their dad, it was getting close to his time to die and to go be with God. And his dad had a special blessing to give to the oldest son. Now, do you remember, is Jacob the oldest son or is Esau? That's right, Esau is the oldest son. So the blessing was going to be for Esau, but Isaac and his mom, Rebecca, they tricked him. They tricked Jacob and they gave the blessing to Jacob instead. And so we finished our story last week with Esau being very upset. He was angry that his brother tricked him and that his father gave the blessing to him. And his mom, Rebecca, told Jacob to leave. I want you to leave our home, and I want you to travel to go see your uncle. He lives in another place. So let's put his uncle over here. So he's on his journey to go visit his uncle and their family and to stay with them for a while in hopes that Esau might calm down and that they can figure out how to mend their relationship. So he's traveling, and I imagine that traveling through the desert is not an easy task. What do you think the hardest part about traveling through the desert might be? I bet that he got hot and maybe thirsty and he was alone as far as we know and maybe he got lonely and was tired of, of being by himself. So I'm gonna read from God's word of what happens next. So it says, Jacob, he left his home and started out to visit. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had already set. And our Bible tells us that he gets a rock and he lays it on the ground to be his pillow. And he lay down to sleep. I don't know if he had a blanket, but I have one for us today to help us, help us imagine in our head that he's sleeping. I wonder, do you think a rock was a very comfortable pillow? Why might he choose a rock to rest his head on? Let's keep reading. It says that in a dream, Jacob saw a stairway standing on the earth. So I've got a 
ladder. Some Bibles might call it a ladder. My Bible this time says it's a stairway, but I liked the idea of a ladder. We can see it easily. And it reached to the reached to heaven, and the angels of God were coming up and down it. So I have some angels for us. And the Bible says that they were coming down to earth, and some were going up to heaven. And they just kept doing that. There were angels coming down to earth and angels going up the stairs to heaven. I wonder, what does that look like? I wonder what it would be like to see that in your dream. I wonder what you think the angels might have looked like. I wonder what the staircase or the ladder looked like. I imagine that it must have been beautiful, maybe made of gold and shiny. Because there must have been something special about it that Jacob knew that it was a stairway to heaven. And the Bible says, The Lord stood above the stairway and said, I am the Lord. I am the God of your grandfather Abraham and the God of Isaac. So remember Abraham we talked about. He traveled all around. And Isaac was his dad. Here's Isaac. I will give you and your children after you the land on which you were lying. They will be like dust of the earth that can't be counted. So he's, he's kind of echoing the promise he gave Abraham about you're going to have so many kids. Your descendants are going to be like the dust of the sand. I don't think I could count the sand in this box. That's impossible, but not for God. He says that they will spread out from the west to the east, and they will spread out all over and all the nations on earth will be blessed because of you and the children after you. Did that sound familiar? That also is something that God said to Abraham, that he, the nations will be blessed because of him. So remember, Jacob is still dreaming, but the Lord is speaking to him through his dream. We're going to continue reading. We're almost done reading. Then God says, I am with you. I will watch over you everywhere you go, and I will bring you back to this land I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Wow, what a promise. First, that he's going to have kids and this is going to be their land. Second, that your kids are going to bless the, all the nations. But then third, that God will not leave Jacob. I wonder how you'd feel if you, got, if you heard that promise from, from God. I wonder if this is a happy dream and he wakes up excited or how he'd wake up. I wonder what's going to happen next. Let's keep reading. It says, Jacob woke up from his sleep. He woke up from his sleep and he thought, the Lord is certainly in this place. This must be the house of God, and this is the gate to heaven. So our Bible tells us that when he woke up, he was certain in what he's seen. We're going to move the ladder and the angels since they were part of his dream. And the Bible says that he took the stone that he slept on, and he built a pillar. So I imagine he might have stacked some other rocks around him make a place that he wouldn't forget. The Bible says he poured oil over it and he made it an important place to remember God and where God met him here. And the Bible says that Jacob made a promise. He said, may God be with me. May he watch over me on this journey I'm taking. May he give me food to eat and clothes to wear. May he do just as he promised so that I can return safely to my father's home then you, Lord, will be my God, and this stone will be your house. So after he woke up, he made a promise to God that I will do what you tell me, but please help take care of me as he continues on his journey. But did you hear that it said he will return to his father's house? We know that one day Jacob returns home and sees Esau. And they have 
they mend their relationship. But I wonder what Jacob, how Jacob was changed and what his heart was contemplating, what he was thinking about as he continued his journey to his uncle's house after meeting God in this place. After meeting God and seeing the dream of the stairs to heaven, I wonder how Jacob was changed. I wonder what's important about this story. I wonder what you would like to remember about this story. One thing I want to remember about this story is that even though Jacob made a mistake, he made some bad choices when he tricked his brother and his father Isaac, God still loved him and still met him in a place and made promises to him. Just like we make mistakes, but God is still with us like we saw in the story. He was with Jacob as he traveled. Well, friends, that's where we're going to leave Jacob today. I hope that this story has, has, has been put in your heart, and you might have some questions, and you'll think about it this week. Well, friends, today would have been great if you could have sat in the circle with me, but I'm hopeful we can do that again one day soon. Bye, friends. See you soon.